This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about how The Economist is now bending the knee to Bitcoin. The Economist is, of course, the popular magazine or increasingly less popular magazine. They've had a pretty bad track record over the last 20 years predicting investment trends, and they've been especially bad about Bitcoin. Here's an article from November of 2013 talking about the Bitcoin bubble when Bitcoin was just at $1,000. A few years later, still calling it a bubble in 2017 when it was at $20,000. And even a year ago, they had this article about how crypto goes to zero. And you're not going to believe how crypto goes to zero. It would go to zero if everyone stopped using it. That in five words is how crypto would go to zero. If everyone stopped using it, this is actually, I think, a much better description of The Economist magazine than of Bitcoin or even crypto. Annual circulation numbers have fallen from about 1.39 million in 2009, the year that Bitcoin was born, to just 1.18 million in 2023. Meanwhile, the global population has gone from 6.8 billion to 8 billion, and the world has gained over a billion new people. Unfortunately, not a single one of them has migrated to The Economist on net, which is a pretty sad commentary. This is probably, as I said, because The Economist has had a history of offering such terrible investment advice. I've been reading them, or I started reading them in the late 90s and read them probably until about 2010 and then gave up on them. So the question is, if you're a failing magazine and you're looking to turn things around, what's the best move that you can make? And the best move that you can make in this environment is definitely to begin to cover Bitcoin. When you begin to cover Bitcoin, you get instant relevance as a magazine. You no longer seem so old and stodgy. And you're finally on the right side of history and the right side of investments as, as well. Now, it's pretty difficult to go from being a very vocal publicator of Bitcoin to a pro-Bitcoin magazine. So I think the natural intermediate step, which is the one that The Economist is taking, is some grudging acceptance that Bitcoin is impossible to kill, even if it's not the nicest metaphor that they've chosen. This is the article, Why Bitcoin is Up by Almost 150% This Year, Introducing the Cockroach Theory of Crypto. And it goes on to explain how you could chop the heads off of a cockroach and they can live for as long as a week. You can flush them down the toilet, but they can hold their breath for more than a half hour, etc. And then they make the comparison between Bitcoin and crypto to cockroaches. I'm going to link as well to Corey Clipston's tweet, which contains the full text of this Economist article. But I think it's a significant article. It's worth looking at for a number of reasons. If you're enjoying this video so far, though, I just ask you, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. So The Economist is basically correct in this metaphor. Like cockroaches, Bitcoin can indeed survive anything. It can survive an EMP attack or solar flare, a global, global internet outage, a global grid outage, a global nuclear war as well. And when the power comes back on and the nuclear plumes dissipate, assuming that there are at least two people left on Earth, there are tens of thousands of copies of the Bitcoin blockchain globally distributed, many stored in Faraday bags so they'd be protected from an EMP attack or other sort of solar flare. And these can be used to instantly restart the network. I'll link to the map in the description notes below that shows all the Bitcoin, all the reachable nodes, and there are currently over 16,000 of them, though when you count the unreachable nodes, the number is over 100,000, according to Adam Back. And you can see they're distributed everywhere. And so it really would be uh, the sort of global, global nuclear war that just takes out everything, and there are no humans left. This would be the only way to really stop Bitcoin. Probably still would be some computers running Bitcoin and validating transactions and uh, doing the proof of work algorithm, even if that were to happen. So each of these nodes on this map contains a copy of the blockchain, and each copy contains every single Bitcoin transaction since 2009, as well as the current UTXO or Bitcoin chunk ownership set. And the same cannot be said for your Chase, Chase checking account or your Bank of America savings account. After a nuclear war or EMP attack, your bank account would probably be harvested to help pay for quote-unquote rebuilding America back better. Something like this, especially refurbishing or rebuilding the central banker lounge at the Fed or Janet Yellen's private marble bathroom at the Treasury. So Bitcoin is clearly unstoppable like a cockroach. I think the Economist article is correct like this, but is crypto unstoppable? I would say that this is a conflation that is not correct. We have the Solana network, for example, which in 2022 had 11 major and three minor outages. This is a highly centralized VC project. We have used USDT, Tether, which is the third most popular cryptocurrency by market cap. It's a US dollar stablecoin, and it can easily be frozen by Tether, by the centralized 
authority. We have the DAO hack back with Ethereum when the Ethereum community and basically Vitalik decided to hard fork the blockchain to restore all the funds to a smart contract that got hacked. Vitalik said, Ethereum did a surgical irregular state change. We never even considered actually rolling back the chain. But what he did in fact is he just hard forked Ethereum in order to return money to his buddies, the Ethereum whale. So this is crypto. These are not exactly cockroach projects. They can be modified by a small group of insiders. And Bitcoin is very, very different from crypto. Bitcoin is a digital commodity. It's an asset without an issuer. There's no Ethereum foundation behind it or Cardano foundation. And there's no living founder who directs the roadmap and development. Unlike Bitcoin behind almost every crypto project is a small group of insiders who printed up free money for themselves in order to dump it on naive retail investors or use it in a proof of stake system that they could use to control the entire network. And I'll link below, you've seen this many times if you've been watching this channel, the red or pink parts show the initial allocation to insiders, which means that all these cryptocurrencies are really compromised from the beginning. They can't be neutral when they're issued by a centralized group that in, in itself has awarded itself many coins to begin with. I would say the other significant thing from this Economist article is they're basically walking back their claims that they've been making really since at least 2013 that Bitcoin was a bubble. Here's the quote from the article. The second reason is that with each boom and bust cycle, it becomes clear that crypto, and they really do mean Bitcoin as I'm going to show, crypto is not a bubble like tulip mania in the 1630s or the craze for beanie babies in the 1990s. Although Bitcoin is a volatile asset, its price history looks more like a mountain range than a single peak. Here's the log chart of Bitcoin, and I think that is correct. It's a mountain range where the mountains are constantly getting larger on the right-hand side. But when you compare it to crypto, here's a chart of HEX denominated in US dollars. Here's a chart of Litecoin denominated in Bitcoin. These do not look anywhere the same. And these actually were bubbles. HEX clearly was a centralized scammy bubble that's popped. And even Litecoin is being totally destroyed by Bitcoin over the years. So when you're talking about the mountain range, this is really the only strong mountain range that, uh, that the economist could point to. Another quote from The Economist, people in despotic countries already use Bitcoin and stable coins. Tokens pay to a hard currency like the dollar. Dollar is only hard compared to all these really crappy other fiat currencies, uh, unlike Bitcoin. People in despotic countries already use Bitcoin and stable coins to store savings and sometimes to make payments. And this is, of course, The Economist's grudging recognition that Bitcoin really does have utility and it happens to have tremendous utility for people in developing countries as well as countries that have very despotic currency regimes and very weak fiat currencies, Nigeria, Argentina, Lebanon, Pakistan, etc. I really like this uh, tweet from Tahini's pointing out how Bitcoin is hitting new highs in all of these currencies. And thus has been a very nice fiat debasement hedge for people who live in these countries. And it's good that an elitist publication is finally recognizing this, an elitist publication like The Economist. So The Economist's conclusion that Bitcoin's like a cockroach, you can never eradicate it. I think it's not a bad metaphor to use with beginners, although I have to say that I prefer more positive comparisons for the Bitcoin brand. I really like the pinned tweet under Michael Saylor's account, Bitcoin is a swarm of cyber hornets. I like that much more than cockroaches. It's a swarm of cyber hornets serving the goddess of wisdom, feeding on the fire of truth, exponentially growing ever smarter, faster, and stronger behind a wall of encrypted energy. And of course, he's talking about Bitcoin mining here, the swarm of cyber hornets. One version of this is it's the ASICs, it's the mining rigs buzzing away, but it's also the cyber hornets, the Bitcoin maxis on Twitter and elsewhere who help to defend the protocol. I also like how Michael Saylor in his Christmas address here, which I'll link to, it's a pretty nice meme, calls Bitcoin a shining city in cyberspace. I think these are much better metaphors than calling Bitcoin a cockroach though there is a time and place for each different metaphor. So what's the conclusion? I would say that everyone, even and especially Bitcoin's enemies like The Economist, will end up bending the knee to Bitcoin. Many people will hold their fiat and crypto all the way down to zero, thus helpfully removing themselves from the economic and genetic fitness pool. However, more open-minded people will eventually embrace Bitcoin like The Economist, however, grudgingly. Unless you really, really like losing and losing and losing, you should come and join us on the winning team because there's really only Bitcoin. There is no second best. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. 
Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.